belief of the people. The worst thing in the world, since I'm sending a shout out to all the pastors out there today, I want to acknowledge them. I want to let them know that we got their back because people that have, don't have a clue. They don't have a clue what it takes to pastor a church. I know a lot of people on the outside looking in and say, I would do this different. I would do that different. The worst thing in the world. But the fact of the matter is, let's see now. The pastors, I, I got take, some I wanna, uh, feedback coming here. Let me let them get this cut off. And we got their back because people have and something. so that that is so important that all of these preachers do you not realize that thousands of preachers are walking away from the ministry, walking out the poor pit on a daily basis? Thank God for Cardale coming on, bless you. That's the reason why it's important that we pray for our spiritual leaders because every day I didn't say every month, I didn't say every week, I didn't say every year, every day. Preachers are walking away from the poor people because of the pressure, the pressure that they are under. And that's the reason why you should be praying for your leader I'm talking about on a daily basis. And what I told y'all the other day, don't just pay, pray for them on a daily basis, but you ought to be praying for them three times a day. You ought to be praying for them when you get up in the morning, pray for them while we're on here at noontime. And you ought to pray for them before you go to bed at night. Y'all heard what I said the other day, all of y'all that was on here with me the other day. What I told y'all, I told you that you ought to pray for your past before you pray for yourself. Now I know a lot of people weren't receptive of that. And somebody said, why? Because number one, the Bible says, watch for your soul. Number two, the Bible says he gonna have to give an account to God. Number three, because he's supposed to feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Number four, because he's supposed to be, you know what the Bible says in the book of Luke? God has spake out of the mouth of his holy prophet ever since the world began. The Bible says, how can you heal without the preacher? And how can he preach except it being sent? You know what happened to a lot of people, the reason why they lose faith and confidence? Because if they look at the lives of other preachers that have faltered, have faltered, have failed, have given up, have turned back, and have hoodwinked the people and stuff. And so then they try to judge every preacher by the ones that have not achieved the greatness that God has called us to be, to do. Are you with me? And you know, I like to talk about the scripture that say, uh, that tell us don't compare ourselves. The Bible says to compare ourselves among ourselves is not wise. But if you have a true shepherd, I'm talking about one that's not compromised. I'm talking about one that teaching Pentecostal truth, apostolic doctrine, standing on the word of God, letting people know that the ways of sin are death and the gift of God is eternal life. Now, does that mean that he have dotted every eye and crossed every T? That doesn't mean that. Does that not mean that Somewhere along uh, in life, he may have fallen himself, but he got back up, repented, got himself back together. I want you to think about this now. I want you to think about this. We like to judge, and rightfully so, but we like to judge preachers more harsh than we judge ourselves. Now, let me deal with that, because all of us that are saved, all of us, since we've been saved, hadn't dotted every I and crossed every T. But your pastor stood by you when you messed up, when you had some shortcomings. Your pastor stood by you when your life was all jacked up. Your pastor stood by you when you got back on drugs and where you was uh, fussing and fighting with your wife and stood by you when your family member didn't even stand by you. Are you listening to me? So what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to let you know that if you had somebody that been speaking into your life, somebody that helped you to get out the guttermost and take you to the uttermost, somebody that was with you when you were down and out, somebody with you when you didn't know which way to go, which way to turn, and he spoke a word in your life, and God changed your whole life. So now if that person had fallen short in every area, what you should be doing is trying to encourage you should be trying to pray 
that God will lift them back up. So I want to pray for all the past pastors out there today. And I want to encourage all the people of God. You know, before I got saved, they had a song, Stand By Your Man. I think that was before I got saved. Because uh, uh, I don't think there's no church song. But anyway, Stand By Your Man. And that's important because the people in the world even understand that. People in the world even understand that you're supposed to stand by your man. I think at that particular time when that song was made, it was talking about your mate or your spouse or your uh, uh, significant other, whoever they was talking about in that song. Thank God for Mary and Yates coming on. God bless you. I want to encourage you today. Don't y'all forget to like, tag, and share. But I want to encourage you today, every one of y'all, that be on here with us on a daily basis. Thank God for Sister Dorothy Dunn. I want you to know that we love you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your support. But let me say this. Coming on here with me at noonday, you know what I'm on here for? To help the helpless and give hope to the hopeless, to inspire, to motivate, to encourage people to have a closer walk with God, to uh, bring people to the the knowledge of the truth that you make a wise decision when it comes down to your salvation. But if you have a home church and you under a man of God that teaching and preaching Pentecostal truth, apostolic doctrine, and letting people know holiness is right. On Sunday, on Bible class night, you need to find yourself, I'm talking about at your place of worship because your pastor needs you. A lot of people don't realize that you are needed in the house of God because every time you don't show up, every time you stay home, there's a void that's left in the house. There's a place in that church, in that local assembly. When you are not there, you are being missed. See, because when you be there, maybe you better support than other people. I don't know. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I want to encourage you. Support your pastor. Support your church. Your ministry. Thank God for Oliver Spurlock coming on. God bless you. See, because you know what happened? A lot of people, they'll get on, they'll thank God for Sister Linda Williams. <laughs> They'll get on social media. Uh, they'll look at television, uh, YouTube. And the first thing they say, I'm being fed every day. Because Bishop Nixon will be on there every day, teaching and preaching a profound word to help me. But I don't take the place of your shepherd. Are you listening to me? Every one of us need a shepherd. Every one of us needs somebody that's over us. <clears throat> And that's the reason why I'm part of an organization now, because I want to be responsible and I want to be accountable to people under my leadership. So I want to encourage you, please tune in weekdays from 12 to 1. And I love you and I encourage you to be with us every day because I'm trying my best to speak some encouraging words and to the lives of everybody that come on here. But you yet obligated according to the word of God, because the word of God say, forsake not the sum of yourself together as such that were. And so you're obligated to be found in your house of God, serving your man of God. Because you know what the lesson we're going to deal with today, how you can serve your senior pastor. <clears throat> That's what we're going to deal with. Theme scripture coming out of Jeremiah 3 and 15. I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that everybody needs a shepherd. Don't let nobody deceive you with that. And then you have to be careful. You don't just want to go anywhere to any church, to any type of organization. You want to go sit up under somebody that you know are ordained, anointed, and appointed by God. Because <clears throat> they have a lot of great speakers out there. 
A lot of them are nothing but motivational speakers. But you know what the Bible said? The Bible said the letter kill it, but the spirit may uh, give it life. And so just because a person can speak, <clears throat> somebody knocking on my door. Just because a person could speak so profoundly, just because a person could articulate the scripture, does not mean that they are ordained by God. Hold on. I do apologize for that. But let's get back to this lesson. See, my, 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 my goal is to introduce as many people as possible to revelation knowledge and spiritual truth. That's what my goal is. Now, if we have some people out there decide to follow us, to become part of our ministry, we welcome that. But my goal is not only you trying to pull or persuade somebody that's in a church that teaches and preaches the truth to come with me. My goal is for you to undergird the man of God and which God put over you, that you'll be the effective person working in your ministry and your local ministry. That's why you never hear me get on you talking about tithes and offering and stuff like that, because you have an obligation to your own ministry to support your leader. Are you with me? But now if somebody decides to sow a seed into this ministry, we welcome it. But that's not our main goal. That's not what we're here for. That's why you never hardly hear me asking for money for donation. Now we did raise some money for the Kenyan project to give a, a, away a hundred Bibles over in Kenya, Africa. And even now we have uh, another pastor that's been pulling on me to help them uh, because they're building a church in Kenya. And I was telling him that right now we're working on some stuff ourselves in Baton Rouge on Greenwell Street. We are presently in the <clears throat> planning stage of a new place of worship. And we are getting players drawn up for. Uh, uh, senior assistant living facilities, a dialysis center, and a health care, urgent care center. That's what we're working on. So y'all pray for us. Pray for us that God would bless us with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to make these things happen as we go forth in life. I want to create jobs and stuff for people. And you know, we're already working with New Jerusalem Estate, creating home for people. See, it's not just about you. It's all about who you can help, who life you could change. I want to be able to have places where the elderly people would be able to retire to. We want to make that a gated community by the grace of God. And we're working on building a new facilities in Baton Rouge. So we're doing some things. We're working on some stuff. And if you are looking for a place to stay right now, you can call me. I'll call Pastor Lula Lunder, New Jerusalem State on Highway 965, St. Francisville, Louisiana. All right, now it's time for the prayer, time for prayer, because we've been on your talking, trying to encourage you to support your local leader, support your pastor, you know, now we need to go before the Lord in prayer. Let me give these names out because today is Friday, because Monday, it probably would have changed. We want to pray for Sister Cambry's grandfather, prostate cancer, her brother, gastric cancer. We want to pray for Sister Brenda Keller, that God give a miracle of healing. We want to pray for Brother Mario, who had an operation for prostate cancer. The last report I got, he was doing well. I don't have an upgrade on David Hale, 
That's Evangelist King's uncle. So let us remember to pray for him. Pastor Emil Brown, pancreatic cancer. That's Elder Brown, a part of our ministry. That's his brother. I want to pray for Sister Tisha Lee. Uh, that is Evangelist King's uh, daughter. I want to pray for Nicole Mercerdale and Sister Cheryl. And we want to pray for Tyler Sumner. And remember to pray for Joseph and Doris Jackson. Uh, because I think Brother Jackson have gotten scheduled for surgery. And Sister Jackson uh, have a torn rotator cuff. All right, it's time for us to pray. I want to remind you that the music you hear playing in the background, we do not own the rights to this music. Gracious Father, we pray right now that you forgive us for every sin of omission or commission. Blot it out, put it under your blood, God. Cast it unto the sea of forgiveness right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we come not leaning to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we acknowledge that you are God. You're the only true and wise God. There's none like enough to you. And we pray right now, God, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be accepted in God's sight. Because in you, we move, we live, and we have our being. And God, we pray with this prayer request live right now. And we pray, God, let there be a lift, lifting right now. God, we send the word to the homes of these people that on their bed of affliction, God, we decree and declare that by Jesus Christ that you already healed and made whole. And God, we pray for now for everyone that's on your body with us by live streaming, both spiritual and financial breakthrough. And God, we thank you for this gathering even now. We thank you for all of our uh, views in Kenya, Africa, and around the world, God, both spiritual and financial breakthrough. And God, we pray right now against Pastor Carol is in power. The work of God, the spirit of wicked in high places. And God, we pray for all the insurrection and all the supporters of the insurrection that try to overthrow our country. And God, we decree and declare right now that there is no weapon that form against us shall be in the prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, we condemn right now. And God, we pray against every terrorist group that try to terrorize our country, our nation our states, our cities, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you expose, dispose of them by any means necessary. God, we pray against the Aryan nation. We pray against white supremacy. God, we pray against the skinhead. We pray, God, against the power board, the old people. We pray against the KKK. We pray right now against the blood, the crypt, M13. God, every terrorist group in the United States of America. We pray against them right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray that you expose and dispose of them by any means necessary. And God, we pray that thy will be done in earth as it's already done in heaven. Lord, let your angels be kept by wayside that you protect you. people from both seen and unseen danger. And God, we pray right now, let me be like a red and white of God, that the words that we speak, let it come forth, God, under power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that yoke will be destroyed, shackles will be loose, and stronghold will be pulled down, and the captive will be set free. It is in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen, amen, and thank God. That won't be your story anymore, saints. Are you listening to me? Don't y'all forget to like, tag, and share. I say that won't be your story anymore. Thank God for Sister Claire Franklin coming on. We send love all the way to Fort Worth, Texas. Amen. Sister Claire, let your family know we love them. We appreciate them. Thank God for Sister Beatrice. We've been missing you. I hadn't seen you for the last couple of days. We appreciate you so much taking out of your busy schedule just to take some time to be with us. We do not take that for granted. We don't take it for granted not even one minute because we appreciate every one of y'all that be on here with us, especially on a daily basis. Get your paper and pen out because it's time for us to get wider. Or oh, you listen to it. Don't forget to like, tag, and share. Let everybody know that the voice of Pentecostal truth, apostolic doctrine, teaching and preaching that holiness is the only lifestyle that God is calling for. We don't believe in denomination because all denomination does is divide to conquer. But we believe in the word of God. We believe in being who God calls us to be. 
Because the Bible says, be you holy before I am holy. In other words, God said, I want you to be like me. Are you with me? All right. How you can serve your senior pastor. Oh, my God. I didn't know you had surgery, Sister Beatrice. I hope you're doing well. Praise God. We would have had you on our prayer list. But thank God you, you look like you're doing better now. You're on your with us. Our prayers go out to you. Let's pray for it right now. Gracious Father, we thank you for Sister Beatrice Kelly and God. We pray right now that there's no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. We plead the blood of Jesus over right now. By Jesus' strike, we decree and declare that she's healed and made whole. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. She says she's doing good. Thank God for Sister Robin. God bless you. We send love to Natchez, Mississippi. We are talking about serving your pastor. Are you with me? Now, I hope and preach that you're not under a hard a hireling. Because the hireling is not interested in your soul. A lot of hirelings are more interested in your pocketbook. You know, the Bible said, the Bible said, the thief coming but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the Lord said, I've come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. We want to applaud today all of the pastors out there that are yet standing, all the pastors out there yet teaching, preaching truth, all of the pastors that are out there today yet holding on. Because you know, a lot of people have used COVID-19 to not go to church. That is the spirit of hypocrisy. If you can go to Walmart, if you can go to the restaurant, if you can go to the movies, if you can go shopping, and then you use COVID-19 as an excuse not to come to church, you can go to the ball game, that is a spirit of hypocrisy. And that's the reason why I want to encourage the pastor more and more. So the question we started this lesson off with, are you actively, purposely serving your pastor? Thank God this is Terry Drake coming on. Let me say it again. Are you actively, purposely serving your pastor? And we told you the first thing you ought to do is pray for your pastor. You ought to be interceding for your pastor. You ought to be making supplication for him on a daily basis. And then it's my prayer that you would not only pray for him, but pray for him at least three times a day. And I've gone over this several times, the reason why. Number two, you ought to keep your pastor informed. Anything that you see come up in your local assembly that you do not feel is of God, then what you what you ought to be obligated to do is go expose it and tell your pastor about it. He want to be informed. He want to know what's going on. Thank God, this is Cardell. And so you as a sheep in that local assembly. There's a responsibility that's up on you. Because the Bible says you your brother's keeper. So if you see one of your brothers and sisters that's in error, you don't just go along to get along. Thank God for Sister Lily Lewis coming on. Are you listening to me? Because if you see a brother or sister in error, First thing you need to do, go to that person, try to restore them. And when you go to them, go to them with a spirit of meekness. And if they don't listen to you, then get two or three witnesses that the word of God may be established. And if they don't listen to them, then you bring it to your leader. 
You have a spiritual obligation to your brother and your sister to not sit on the sideline and watch them commit spiritual suicide. Are you with me? And a lot of people, uh, they don't realize the Bible says it is your responsibility to communicate with the one that teach you all good things. God put that awesome responsibility on you to communicate with your spiritual leader. Are you listening to me? <clears throat> now, you don't want just all the trivial stuff. You don't want to burden your past down with trivial stuff. But if you see anything out of the ordinary, they're going to bring on a strain. Uh, they're going to affect the pastor's ministry in a negative way. Going to bring a spot of blemish to your church. Something that's going to hurt the, the movement of your church. You ought to feel obligated to try to get that right. The third thing we talked about was submission. You know, a lot of people say, uh, my pal's here, man, just like me. <laughs> he put his pants on just like I do. That is the utmost disrespect. Thank God for Sister Linda Ward coming on. You know what the Bible say? <laughs> the Bible say against an elder, Receive not an accusation unless you have two or three witnesses to confirm it. Then you better make sure that those witnesses are not part of the uh, gossip section. Are you listening to me? So you want to build your ministry. You want to build your leader. You want to be a support to your ministry. You want to be a support to your leader. So that means that you have to learn to submit yourself to the authority that God put over you. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 17, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. That's why you ought to be on a submission. I read this yesterday. I want to read this one more time. Maybe it'll be helpful to somebody out there. Because in order for your church to be powerful, in order for your leader to do some things that uh, that's, would blow your mind, a lot of people looking at ministries and stuff that are doing a lot of stuff. And some of these people... They're doing this stuff. You don't know how they got where they got and how they got the stuff to get what they got in order for the bill and ministry. I'm not interested in that. Listen to me well. But what your responsibility is to try to build the ministry, the house of God, and the people of God in your local assembly. Yeah, we supposed, we supposed to pray for the saints of God around the world. But in our local ministry, we ought to, uh, be actively trying to build our ministry up. Somebody say, how are you going to do it? Through faith, through praying, through witnessing, through testifying, through winning souls. Submission is a very unpopular word, but it's exactly what you need to do if you want to serve your pastor. See, the Bible says, so a man sowed the same thing, going to reap. The Bible says he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet reward. Thank God for Minister Armstrong coming on. So submission is not a bad word. I never had a problem being on submission mission to my leader. Now, I talked about this yesterday, and I need to go back today and reiterate this point. When you start talking about submission, false prophet, False teachers, false apostles, false, ev false evangelists, false pastors. Sometimes want people to follow them blindly. I'm not talking about following 
Uh, it's not about blind obedience without ever daring to speak up. I encourage people to speak up. I encourage people to ask questions. I encourage people. When you see something, say something. I always tell people they have an open door policy. I try to make myself available because if it's something that you don't like, don't understand, don't agree with, then I give you the right to come and sit down and we'll talk about it. The Bible says, come let us reason together. What am I trying to tell you? Sometimes some things that you think don't be right. Sometimes some things that you hear, you misunderstand. So in order to get clarity, revelation, knowledge, and understanding, anytime you see something that you disagree with, <laughs> then you need to go and consult your leader to see why certain things are the way they are. Very few people, very few people do that. And I don't want nobody to blindly follow anybody. I don't care how great they are. I don't care what gift or talent, ability they have. You don't blindly follow anybody. Nobody should blindly follow a king or queen or a president. <laughs> are you listening to me? Because when you blindly follow people, you know what the Bible said? The Bible said the blind lead the blind, they're all going to fall in the ditch. We had four years of blind obedience to a cult like leader. Thank God for Sister Jones coming on. Let me say that again. We just gone through four years of a nation of people, one third of a nation of people, blindly following a blind leader, turn a third of America, amen, Sister Jackson said her husband had surgery today and all went well. He is in recovery, praise God for that, amen. So I guess your surgery be next with that torn rotator cuff. Amen. We thank God everything went well with the surgery. Let him know we was praying for him even on today. So you don't ever want to be a blind leader. I mean, a blind follower. Anybody that cannot stand to be questioned, they must not be confident in what they're saying. If I make a statement, and if I tell you that if anybody, uh, if anybody plead the fifth before the court, they're guilty of something. Then I turn around and plead the fifth over 400 times. So now, according to what you say, then you guilty of 400 different things. Who go to court and plead? the fifth 400 times. But yet and still, they got blind followers following a blind leader. If I tell you that a person that withhold information and stuff, governmental information, top secret stuff, on my server, ought to be prosecuted. And I turn around and I steal over a hundred, I think it was over a hundred different files and take it to my house. It's top secret. First of all, I would never follow nobody that followed somebody that did that. But a lot of people say, well, I'm not following. Yeah, you are. A lot of y'all yet following blind leaders. A lot of y'all don't like the truth. And I have some people that with me, they don't like the truth. Because I speak truth. A lot of people get offended. A lot of people say you should not have said that like that. But the Bible says, oh, rebuke is better than secret love. 
That's the reason why I'm on here trying to encourage all the true men and women of God that yes, standing, not giving up, not quitting, not going along to get along. So don't you ever become, you know what I tell the people in the church, I'm not God. I tell them that I am not God. I don't want you to put me on a pedestal like I'm infallible. So I want to encourage you that your pastor is not infallible also. Are you listening to me? He is not infallible. He's capable of error, but that yet not a reason for you to throw him. You know, the old people say, don't throw the water out with the dish towel, or don't throw the dish towel with the water. Everybody used to say that. But I don't want you to be a blind follower. I want you to follow somebody that's teaching and preaching Pentecostal truth, apostolic doctrine, and yet preaching against sin. Not too many leaders, not too many preachers. Stand against sin in the law. Anytime you support a man that grow over 25 women, been charged with a, a rape two or three times, and you call yourself a man of God, and people are yet sitting on the people that supporting somebody that did these type of things, then you follow them blindly. But if you have a man of God that's standing up preaching the truth, I'm talking about not compromising with the world, not compromising to get along, to go along, to get along. I'm talking about somebody that's going to preach the truth regardless of what it's going to take. These are the preachers I'm talking to. These are the leaders I'm talking to. I'm not talking about these false prophets. And so we have to realize that we are obligated to pray for our leaders. We are obligated to inform our leaders. We are obligated to submit ourselves to the leadership of our leaders of the authority of our leader. I know I'm talking right. But let's go a little bit further. Let's go to number four. <clears throat> let's go to number four. Please write these down. Go back and study them in your devotional time. Number four is respect. Don't ever get to the place where you think you're so common with your leader that you can show disrespect. I'm the pastor of the church and I do everything I can to respect all the people of God. And even the ones that are not even in the church. I believed in that before I got saved. My mom taught us always respect other people, especially elderly people, especially ladies. And so now anybody that's in a position of apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. All of these people that feed you with knowledge and with understanding, they are deserving of your respect. Don't let nobody put your mouth on your pastor. Stand in the defense of your ministry. Are you with me? Your pastor deserves your respect. Thank God my niece coming on, Tanya. God bless you, baby. Your pastor deserve your respect. That means no gossiping behind his back. I don't think y'all caught that. See, because a lot of people, they be talking, you know, oh, I was just having fun. No, you don't do that. That's not of God. No gossiping behind his back, no jokes about him within the ministry. No criticism of him in leadership me. Be loyal and honest and open. Let me talk to you. Because a lot of people think if they get a few layers when they say something that they think uh, ain't nothing to it. And they say it in a public meeting, showing disdain or disrespect or trying to be funny. That is not of God. And so, your past deserve your respect. Thank God for 
Crystal coming on. And so somebody said, well, I wasn't gossiping. I was just sitting there listening. Don't even be caught in the company of people that's talking about your leader. And I have a spiritual re reason for that also. The Bible said, touch not my anointing, do my prophet no harm. And people don't realize there's a difference between respect and blind leadership, following blindly following leaders. There's a difference. The number one reason why I have to respect a pastor that's been ordained, anointed, appointed, and called by God. Because first of all, God set up the office. When I disrespect the office, I disrespect God. Y'all better hear me good. You don't ever want to put yourself in a place with God that you get in trouble because you disrespected your leader. You know what I tell people all the time? I tell people all the time that I know I'm going to be independently wealthy. Are you listening to me? I know that the favor of God is going to be up on my life. Are you listening to me? You know why? Because the Bible says, honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and that it shall go well with thee. There it is. Always honored my mother. Always respected my mother. I would not even use the word lie in front of my mother. There were sometimes some things she said I disagreed with, but I never disrespected her. Are you listening to me? Before God even saved me, and she wasn't saved at the time. There was quite a few things that I disagreed with, but I never disrespected her. So now, according to what the Bible say, the Bible say, honor thy father and mother. I never got a chance to know my father. The Bible say, honor thy father and thy mother that, uh, that it may go well with thee. Are you with me? A lot of people don't realize when you honor and respect people that's over you. God said, then it's going to go well with you. Are you listening to me? Because God is the one that put your parent in your life. They may not have been the best of parents, but that yet don't give you a right to disrespect them. And so your spiritual leader, before you disrespect your pastor, it'll be better that you go reconcile with him and sit down and say, I think I'm going to go somewhere else. And then express the reason why. Now make sure what you're saying is concrete. Because everybody has been assigned to a person and to a place. And no matter where you go, no matter how far you go, a lot of people find themselves running away from the place of their assignment. People make moves that God never told them to move, make. The Bible said promotion don't come from the east, the west, no, does are coming from the south. God set it up some, God set it down other. When you make a lateral move, I cannot say that that is in the will of God. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They have a lot of people make lateral moves because, and you know what get to me? People get to talking about church. Right? Oh, I got hurt in the church. I got hurt in the church. You got hurt in the bottle when you kept going there before God saved you. I don't quite understand this. Because the word came for, the Bible said the word is like a two-edged sword. It cut to the marrow of the bone. The word came forth. The word found you liking. The word found you in your mess. The word found you in your sins. So then you decided that you'll get revenge on the past by talking about it. Are you listening to me? I don't want you to get yourself in trouble with God. 
So whatever you do, don't ever show disrespect to older people, to your spiritual leaders, and men don't ever disrespect your wives. That's a big one with me. I think you should also try very hard not to publicly disagree with him. Yeah, we hear people in the church, I don't agree with that. Hypocrite. You're in the middle of a church meeting. You're in the middle of a leadership class. And somebody come out, I don't agree with that. Who made you God for a day? A lot of things you may not agree with, but that doesn't mean you're right. If you have a problem with something the pastor did or said, discuss it privately. Let me say it again. Discuss it privately. Peter got himself in trouble with Jesus. When Jesus rebuked Peter and told Peter what he was going to do, Peter turned around and rebuked the Lord. And told the Lord not so. When the Lord would let him know what he came here for his purpose, he had to go to the cross. Peter, Peter opened rebuilt that. Trying to circumvent his, 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 his destiny. Peter did not understand. If Jesus don't die, if he don't shed his blood, we don't have a right to the tree of life. So when Peter opened his mouth and spoke out openly, Jesus said, get thee hence behind me, Satan. This is the same man he just gave the keys to the kingdom. Now he turned around and rebuked him and tell him, get behind me, Satan. You don't ever disrespect your pastor in the public. That's not God. Do you agree with me on the importance of serving your pastor? What other ways can you think of to serve your pastor as your spiritual leader? Thank God for Brother Brandell coming on. Sister Darshay, God bless you. Look at what the Bible says. My time is almost up. Write these scriptures down. Go back and study your devotional time. First Timothy chapter 5, verse number 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted of double honor, especially they that who labor in the word and doctrine. Did y'all get that? The Bible said the one that labor in the word and doctrine, you ought to count them worthy of double honor. You know what some people have the mindset? Oh, I just honor God. No. The Bible say the elders that rule well ought to be counted worthy of double honor. I didn't write the book. But the, the, the God is the author of this book. Are you listening to me? Out the living Bible says pastors who do their work well should be paid well and should be highly appreciated especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching. So let me ask you a question. Do you think I work hard at both teaching and preaching? The simple English Bible says, the elders who are good leaders deserve double pay. This is especially true for those who work hard at preaching and teaching. Don't ever find yourself disrespecting your past. I don't care if y'all are what you call bosom buddies. Y'all can be the best of friends. There is a line that you cannot pass. I know I'm talking right. There is a line that you cannot pass, especially in the public. There are some things that you may not be in agreement with him on, but you never disrespect him openly in a public setting. There are some things that you need to go privately in private sin with your pastor and let him hear why you disagree. And I will guarantee you nine times out of 10, 
is something that you misunderstood. I had a sister one time told me, said, Pastor, I'm going to tell you something. This is a secret. I, I said, okay, no problem. She said, amen. Thank God for Sister January. You're so sweet. She put on the screen, your own family follows you. That, you know, I, I never even looked at it like that. She said, that speaks volumes. God bless you, Sister January. That's something to think about. Thank God for Bishop Ward coming on. That's something to think about. Thank God for Sister Nico coming on. Bless you. You know, uh, and it's a hard thing for your family to follow you. I agree with Sister January. My kids, uh, they wonder why they got rebuked when other kids got away with stuff. My mom, my sister, always said I was harder on my family than I was anybody else in the church. I never showed partiality because it was a family now. But my sisters followed me. My mother followed me. All of my children are with me. Several nieces and nephews. And you know, I, I never thought about that, but God bless you, Sister January. That was a profound statement that you made. And we just appreciate you all. And uh, Sister January almost brought me to tears. <laughs> We appreciate you all and find yourself in a Bible-believing church, one that's teaching and preaching apostolic doctrine, Pentecostal truth, yet preaching against sin, yet standing on the wall, crying out for the nation. And whatever your church home in is, find yourself there. Sunday morning, find yourself in your place. Quit making excuses why you can't come to church. Quit lying and put it on COVID-19. You go everywhere else you want to go. Quit saying I don't have no transportation. How you get where you're going? You can go out to eat. You can go to the mall, you can go to Walmart, you can go to the movies, you can go to ball games. So don't make no excuses why you can't go into the house of God. But if you're in our area, I want to welcome you to the way of holiness church. Every Sunday morning, 845, prayer, 9 o'clock, worship service. That's 2855 Highway 952, Jackson, Louisiana. Are you with me? Amen. Thank God for the comment coming from me, Bandy Woodall. She talked about everybody don't know how to maintain confidentiality. What you tell them in confidence within a week is known by the entire church. I'm so happy, Bishop, you're not a pastor of this sort. Thank God, Sister Jackie. I appreciate the very kind words that you give me. Thank God for Bishop Ward. He said, Bishop, I always enjoy your teaching. Keep up God's good work. We try our best. That's why we're always praying that y'all continue to pray for us. You know, the devil had been after me for years, uh, attacking me and I'm talking about my body attacking me. I, I fell at work, broke my nose, and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm yet suffering from uh, neck and back problem where I got hurt on my job. All of these things, uh, the enemy tried to stop me, tried to block me, tried to shut me up, but I won't be silenced. I'm here to give help to the helpless and hope to the hopeless. My time is up. Matter of fact, I've gone beyond my time, but I do I always like to pray before we go off the air. Gracious Father, we thank you right now. God, we give you honor, praise, and glory for all that you've done, everything you're about to do. We actually let your favor move up on this prayer request list right now. Touch, heal, and deliver all of those on the prayer request list. And God, we speak to everyone that's on here by live stream. I pray, God, that your favor be up on their life. 
that they be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when they come, blessed when they go, that the blessing of the Lord shall overtake them. And God, even now, we thank you, God, for all of our followers around the world, especially in Kenya. God, both spiritual and financial breakthroughs. And God, we give you honor, glory, and praise. We ask that you keep us with our minds stayed upon you. In Jesus' name, God is changing your story. If you're in the Baton Rouge area, 12 o'clock Sunday, If you're in the Baton Rouge area, 12 o'clock every Sunday, meet us at 3345 Plank Road. Are y'all with me? 3345 Plank Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And if you're in the Jackson area, Jackson, Louisiana, the surrounding area, you can meet us at 9. 2855 Highway 952, Jackson, Louisiana. God is changing your story, Saint. Are you listening to me? God is changing your story. Nothing can conquer us because we are victorious. Oh, yes, we are. On Freedom Friday, I want you to know nothing can conquer us because we are victorious. God bless you, sister, baby. We love you, baby. We are victorious, saints. Nothing could conquer us. Because the Bible said we're more than conquered. The Bible said there is no weapon that's formed against us. Shall be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises in the devil, we condemn. We are victorious. And remember, as always, we love you. And we love you unto life. In Jesus' name.